Good morning, Kansas, and thank you so much for starting your Thursday here with us. I'm Eddie Randall. And I'm Alexis Padilla. Topping your 530 headlines, a tax package moves through the state house. The Kansas Senate took up the Republicans' flat tax bill on Wednesday. Our Capitol Bureau Chief Rebecca Chung has reaction from Governor Laura Kelly. Well, that tax package is now heading here to the House, but even if it passes, the governor is promising to veto the bill. So the question is, will Republicans have enough votes needed to override that veto when it comes down? A GOP tax bill is moving through the state house, sparking backlash from Democrats. It just seems that this is being um, rushed. There are a lot of components here that I really like, but I will say the flat tax is a non-starter. Its biggest flaw for the governor, a single rate income tax of 5.25%. There's no way the flat tax does not work uh, in the state of Kansas. She's vowing to veto the plan, even with the other add-ons that mirror her own tax proposal. That includes speeding up, eliminating the food tax, and getting rid of the state tax on Social Security. Hopefully my veto will be uh, sustained, and then we can move forward on a tax bill that, that works for Kansans. It is past time. With 3 to $4 billion in the coffers, it's time to give the money back to Kansans. Both Republican and Democratic leaders are holding out for their own plans to pass, arguing that theirs provides the most relief. The governor even siphoning some key votes in the Senate to sign on to her plan. We have got to come up with the ways that help the people and not just those at the top bracket. Republicans failed to override the governor's veto last year, just one vote shy of the 27 votes needed for the bill to pass. Senator Dennis Pyle, a former Republican turned independent, voted to sustain that veto. When we go back, you don't have the votes. Some point in this session, you're gonna to come to the realization that we're gonna to have to, if we want tax relief for the people of Kansas, we're going to have to come and look at what the governor is proposing. Now, the vote in the Senate was 25 to 11. Again, keep in mind, 27 votes are needed to override the governor's expected veto. As for the House, they'll need 84 votes, and they're expected to vote on this this week. For now, reporting at the Capitol, I'm Rebecca Chung.